Jazz here, and I am so digging the Geek Cast Radio Network. There is nothing wrong with your podcast player. Do not attempt to adjust the volume. Hello and welcome to our studio. This is Studio 2009. I'm, of course, TF Joe and Mike. And joining me this time around is Mr. DJ Valentine from Simplistic Reviews. And apparently he still has issues, too. But <laughs> we're not going to go into any of that. We, we, we might. We might look. I was gonna. Well, I was gonna take a break, okay, from <laughs> giving out my issues. I, I hit. I hit them over the head with Thor, but then San Diego Comic Con came, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> wait. I'm gonna wait and see what you guys have for me, and then I will see if I have issues, okay? And I gotta tell you, I might have some issues. I'm just. I'm just gonna put it out there. I might, we have a live version of uh, DJ Valentine has issues right <laughs> on this show right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. So. Our SDCC 22 thing that we're talking about here tonight specifically revolves around what was revealed at San Diego Comic-Con 2022 with Marvel and DC, Marvel Studios and DC. Are they calling it DC Films or are they calling uh, who, it DC Who cares News? anymore? DCU, I, the, the ABC, the EF, who cares at this point? They don't, they don't, I don't even think they know. It's like, <laughs> it's like DC don't at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's like there's a new, you know, pink blossom on Batman and Robin at this point. <sighs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so this is coming from the website discussingfilm.net. So I will have the link to this article in the show notes. But basically, San Diego Comic Con was this past weekend, ladies and gentlemen, and there was a lot of. That happened at San Diego Comic-Con. Steve and I kind of talked a little bit about the Transformers news that happened as it happened because we recorded the Thursday night. Like, literally, I had all this other news that we needed to catch up on. And then all of a sudden, we're recording on Thursday night, the preview night of Comic-Con. And that's the day and the time that apparently either SDCC gave them or whatever, but Transformers had their panel on Thursday night. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we had all this stuff. And we'll have some other stuff in a, in a future ATTF to come out to um, to talk about and to reveal. But DJ is all about the superheroes, I think. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, okay. I, I know about Transformers. Alan Tudyk is Optimus Prime. I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, okay. <laughs> from what I've heard Good. from the preview. And so, yeah, so I'll, I'll have to send you links after the show, but there is a, like a, like a teaser, like a, you know, a promo video that they put out and then they're putting out like the first five minutes of the show where the first seven, I don't know. There's like, but there's like a, a promo where you get to hear his voice and, and, uh, who who is Alan Tudyk to you? Just to get this off our oh, chest. Alan Tudyk. I mean, that's Wash from Firefly. That's uh, he's on the Resident okay. Alien show that's out right now. But Alan Tudyk, he's K two S O from Rogue One. He's uh, Alan Tudyk is great. I, I have no problem with Alan Tudyk. He he was the Joker. I think he still is the Joker on the Harley Quinn cartoon show. Uh, but um, yeah, he's great. I just don't. I've never. I, when you say, "Oh, who's gonna do the voice of Optimus Prime?" The last person I would have thought to be Alan Tudyk. But I mean, maybe he's good. I have not heard it. Yes. Uh, so, oh, wow. Leaf on the wind. <laughs> I did. Yeah. But, okay. So, for me, where I know him from is not any of that stuff. Oh, Joe. He's great. He's a great Joker, by the way. He does a. I mean, he's. Oh, I'm sure he is. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. I, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not saying he isn't. What I'm like, let me just, when did Harley Quinn start? Uh, two years ago, maybe? Maybe one and a half years ago? Uh, something like that. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, Harley Quinn, Clayface. Oh, he was Clayface and the Joker yes. and the Condiment King. He's Holy crazy. crap, he's every. He's a fantastic he's Clayface because he does, he does like, a, so. it's like a, I'm an actor kind of Clayface. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. That's the way he should be played. Yep. So 22 years ago and coming up. What what is it? Nineteen years ago now, or whenever two thousand four was. So I know two thousand one is twenty two years ago. Mm -hmm. He was what in a Knight's Tale? Uh, yes, he was. Great film. 
great uh-huh. film. Uh-huh. He's good in that. Everybody's good in that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody's good. And, That's uh, one of those uh, unsung movies. Yes, yes, it is. And I sing its praises every chance I get to anybody who will listen. So in that movie, what I remember him saying is constantly to anyone who pissed him off, I will fong, and I'm doing a, I'm not trying to do an Alan Tudyk. I'm just, I will fong you. Like that, that, that was what his, his, like, you know, whatever. I, I, I and think then, Alan, Alan Tudyk, Nice Tales, the only movie I remember, because I love it, is the only movie where the hero screams his own name when he's about to triumph. <laughs> In the end, well, yeah, yeah, he screams I mean, his own name. I don't want to speak ill of the dead. I mean, but but yeah, that was a little much. <laughs> but you know, hey, good on Mr. Ledger for the acting. I mean, it was fantastic. Oh, that, that movie's great. Holy crap! <laughs> holy crap! That movie has two Jokers in it. It does. It does. Good lord! It does. <laughs> oh wow! And Robert and then, Barath- Robert Baratheon's kicking around in there. Uh, mm-hmm. A whole bunch of freaking Mark people. Addy and yeah. yeah, there's a whole bunch of people. So and then in two thousand four, uh, visions flying around in that movie. <laughs> Isn't Patrick? Isn't that Paul? I think I think that's the first yeah, time Paul I ever Bettany. saw Paul Bettany. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like everybody, like so. When I, I think it was either one division or whenever, or maybe it was Ultron. Whenever the hell Vision shows up, mm. people were doing the whole meme of. This is how you know Paul Bettany. This is how I know him. And they showed the naked scene naked of, scene of, 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 of him. <laughs> Chaucer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of Chaucer. Yeah. So anyway, and then in 2004, he was the voice of Sonny the Robot in iRobot. Yes, he is Sonny the Robot. Very good movie. Yes. So, Holy pleasure. So, yeah. So Alan Tudyk, amazing actor, amazing person. I like the casting of him as Optimus Prime because it's a voice. It, it's kind of like how okay, look, everybody that does Optimus doing Peter Cullen tries to tries to do a Peter Cullen. Mm-hmm. I, from what I've heard, the little previews I've seen online sounds nothing like. Not even trying to put on an impression of the man. Oh, so. I might not be. I might be out then. <laughs> I, I oh, love you some Peter see, Cullen. Got it. <laughs> well, okay, but. Did you watch Transformers animated at all? Uh, I think I watched the the, the Netflix one where the guy who was no, not Peter no, Cullen no, 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 sounded no, no, like no, 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 no. Transformers animated was from 2007. It's on to be if you don't want that to where Optimus doesn't have the faceplate. Yeah, yeah, I did see clips of that. He, he wasn't has, going to Peter Cullen he either. Has yeah. the faceplate? Yes, he has the faceplate, but it was the Derek J. Wyatt design right. show. He has the faceplate. He just doesn't always use it. But it was David K as the voice of Optimus. So you go from Beast Wars Megatron into how he would do an Optimus, right? And it's complete. But it, it, it's so good. Anyway, so yes, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, twenty twenty two. Tudyk, we're talk. talk about talking about Tudyk, Alan Tudyk, all Tudyk, all Tudyk, all the time, all Tudyk, all the time. <laughs> this is the. Tudyk talk. Tudyk talk. This is the talk. <laughs> Tudyk talk. Tudyk talk. Studio is gone. This is just Tudyk talk. Tudyk talk. Oh, God. Then he Comic Con. So, yes. Uh, I digress. Then he go Comic Con. Have you seen the trailer for Wakanda Forever and what's the other one they I've put out? I've seen all the trailers um, for pretty much everything. Okay. Have you even that seen a put- leak of okay. uh, Guardians? I've seen it like maybe 10 seconds of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a, I don't, okay, look, I understand DC and Warner brothers are kind of, you know, in a bind right now. And of course the easiest way to get out of that bind is to get rid of that one person mm-hmm. and bring in the superior flash, which mm-hmm. is Grant. Cause it's the only I warned way. you. I warned you. Uh, I warned you. Mike. <laughs> you look, I sat here. This guy, this guys, this is off air. We and Mike were talking and I was like, look, <laughs> I don't know how you promote this movie. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> the guy who's the star of your movie is literally David Koresh. How do you do it? <laughs> how? <laughs> and I guess the answer is we don't. We don't promote it you at don't. all. <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> so, uh, this episode of the show, folks, is it, it, I wanted to make it a balancing act. I wanted to have us discuss how DC and Marvel each. <sighs> approach their marketing but there there really is no contest it's not, it's, really is no. it's not even close 
No, it's it, it's it's one hundred percent to zero, really, seriously. So, as I said, uh, uh, discussingfilm.net, they have every superhero thing that was discussed between the two companies at at SDCC twenty twenty two. We are recording this the Sunday night. Essentially, the convention is over. The Warner Brothers slash DC panel featured Black Adam, right. And Shazam 2. Right. Fury of the <laughs> <That's> Gods. <laughs> yes, yes. Fury of the Gods. Yes, and, yes. you know. Did you like Shazam 1? I, I don't even know how you feel about Shazam 1. I never even saw it. Really? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah no. I I have been out, like, literally, the la- outside of animated things and maybe things that are, like, the last DC film I saw before the Batman, which the Batman is just the Batman. Yes. And it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last DC film I saw, I'm trying to think, that was live action and not animated was... You saw The Suicide Squad? Mm-mm. Ooh. Last one I saw was Dark Knight Rises. Wow. I thought... Yeah. That's a, yep. that's a long, one long time was... ago, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not that's tainted I... by, you're not tainted by uh, the Snyderverse at all, are you? Not really. Oh, I mean, I. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I, I'm not really tainted by it. I, I remember this now. I did. Whenever I what was it, 2013 that MOS came out. Oh God, yes. Whenever MOS <laughs> came out, I remember seeing MOS in the theater in 2013. Okay. Okay. So that's like, and I've seen. Yeah. I okay. Now that I'm thinking, because. Steve wanted to cover it for Altered Geek, and so you never saw the bad Suicide Squad. You saw none, no Suicide Squads. I have not seen any Suicide Squads. Mm, there's only one. That's I good. have, <laughs> yeah, I have seen the BS that is BVS. Oh, I have seen <laughs> most of the most of the 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 Batfleck uh, scenes from. Um, Snyder from Justice League. Which one, yeah, the Snyder so, cut or the Whedon cut? No, no. The, the, uh, okay, so you'll you'll appreciate this. Mm. So you have the the W cut, and then you have the Snyder cut, right? When when this all when that was all going down, I'm like, oh god, maybe this was was what it was like in the dark ages between the Lester cut and the Donner cut. No. No, like no, it's oh, not. <laughs> no, it's, not. <laughs> it's not. But like seriously, everybody that was compare, like not comparing, but saying, you know, the W cut versus the the Snyder cut and whatever. Like that's the first thing my mind went to was like the differences between the Lester cut and the, and the Donner cut. See, the difference between the Lester too. cut and the Donner cut and the Snyder cut and the Whedon cut is that the Lester cut uh, or Lester and uh, Donner. They know what editors are. (laughs) They're aware of, oh, maybe I shouldn't shove every single shot piece of footage in a movie. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should make sure the movie has, you know, some kind of pacing to it, some kind of story that's easy to follow. Because Snyder Cut doesn't have that. I know Snyder Cut fans. Look, it's way better than Whedon Cut. Whedon Cut sucks for a completely different set of reasons. Whedon yeah. Cut is just, yeah. it's chopped to pieces. But even if I put the pieces back, the story is crap. It's a bad story. It's just bad. And I, yeah. I, 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 I don't really blame a lot of people. It's just sometimes you get a really bad script. Uh, mm-hmm. Terrio, I think, wrote it or whatever. Uh, and they're doing the best they can. I mean, Affleck's doing the best he can. Uh, what's his name? Ray Palmer, I think, is his name? The, the actor who has a problem with WB at this point. He was, I mean, the, the performances, I don't blame the actors. I I kind of don't even blame Snyder. It's just it's just like, just, it's a shit sandwich. You just gotta, you just gotta eat it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, that, that, those movies are um, not good. <laughs> they're not good so, at all. And, one. and the reason, yeah, and the and and I I could be completely wrong about this, and I would have to, and this actually ties back into SDCC. 
CC or C, however C, C, many CCs. C, 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 yeah, yeah. I've been doing that a lot recently in podcast recordings. I've forgotten that there are only two Comic Con. Comic-Con. I don't care where it is. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know. <laughs> but you know, this is the big one. They're back to having it because we haven't had it for two years. This is, and there were a lot of companies and things that didn't even like. We're dropping out. We're we're not going. Sorry, not not happening. So, but. The reason why I call it the BS that was BVS is because I swear to God, and I could be misremembering this, we were talking, that's what Altered Geek launched on, was the announce, the Comic-Con announcement of Batman versus Superman. Mm. That's one of the things the show launched on, that Steve launched it on. And then it was like two years, and it got to like 2014, 2015. And we're and by that point, I was just like, "Yeah, the BS that is BVS because we're never going to get this damn film." All right? Like it was like two years, two years, two. Years. I like to call that. So, I, I like to call that movie. And I again, I was, I want to say down on it from the beginning, but I once it was announced, I was not happy because that movie is premature ejaculation. You literally had one one movie in this universe and you went right to BVS. You know how long... You, and we know why. They were trying to catch up with Marvel, but you got to establish Superman first. Man of yeah, Steel, yeah. I'm not a fan of that movie, but you got to give me some more time with Superman. Maybe establish yeah. who Batman is. Maybe establish who Batman is in this universe. Maybe establish... A lot of these things, who Lex Luthor is, they just went right <laughs> for yeah. the biggest combination ever to try and jumpstart their way. And these, the people who did this don't even work there anymore. They tried to do, yeah. they tried to catch up with Marvel with one shot, and they rushed everything. And that's why when I and that it, didn't happen until 2016, right. Marvel already had eight years on. Right. Them. And when it, so when it was announced, people were like, "Oh yeah, it's Batman for Superman." I was like, "Ugh." This is not going to end up well because they have – I don't even know who this Superman is. They haven't even given me yeah. – that's one of my issues as we're getting into the San Diego Comic-Con thing is that <laughs> apparently it hasn't changed this. What, what year did Man of Steel come out? 2013? Uh, 2012, 2013. I'll look it up. Hang on one second. Give me a second. Since that time, we've gotten more movies with a talking raccoon than we've gotten with – fucking Clark Kent. <laughs> so I'm a little angry that DC... Yeah, 2013. 2013. Yeah. So nine years, I've seen more of uh, Groot. I've seen more of... Uh, shoot. In that time, Bucky has been Bucky brainwashed in an unbrainwashed, and we've gotten one Superman movie. One. They don't yeah. like Superman, or they don't understand Superman, or they don't want to make money off of Superman and this is not just one set of people this is like three regimes changed in DC since Man of Steel has come out and they just can't figure out how to make a freaking Superman movie you have Henry Cavill love him or hate him he is probably the best version of Superman you're going to get in this generation I think closest you're going to probably get other than maybe Taylor the guy who's on the Superman and Lois show he's really good Tyler Tyler, he's great Uh, but Henry Cavill, you got a good Superman. You got fifty percent of it done. You got you cast probably the right guy. I give Snyder yeah. credit; he cast the right guy. Henry Cavill, to me, it looks like what Superman looks like when Jim Lee draws him. It's like, oh, that's that's Superman. Okay, yep. Can you give him a script? No. Okay. Can can we can we try? Maybe let's do Brainiac. No. Oh, uh, uh, can we get Lex Luthor? Oh, you turn him into the Joker? Oh, okay, whatever. Can we just do anything with Superman? And it's clear to me that they either don't like, and Snyder's on record saying he doesn't like Superman, don't like or don't understand how to make a Superman movie anymore. What happened? How come Captain America is the closest we've gotten to a Superman movie, Superman, since Car- uh, Christopher Reeves? That's it's, it's insane yeah. to me how you can't do a Superman movie. They won't even freaking announce it. These, you saw how rabid the fan base was, and then how angry they were when they found that Henry Cavill wasn't even there. <laughs> they went fucking nuts because they're like, "You told me Henry Cavill was coming, now he's not coming." It's clear he has a fan base. Any minute now, Brainiac will explode. And guess what? 
You're going with him. No, Dark Side. To get off this rock, you'll have to go through me. You really are a glutton for punishment. Time and again I've beaten you, humbled you. What makes you think today's outcome will be any different? Because this time, I won't stop until you're just a greasy smear on my fist. So Henry Cavill and San Diego Comic-Con 2022. Right. What a debacle. And it had <laughs> nothing to do with the man himself. It yeah, had they, to do with a... De- Deadline website. leaked it and said that he was coming. <laughs> and then Screen Rant, I guess, doubled down and said he was coming. And then he didn't show up because I think he's filming The Witcher somewhere in Prague. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody lost their freaking minds because he didn't show up. You guys, you guys, guys, <laughs> you know how uh, if I said, if I put like a whole bunch of random people in a room and I said, name me who this is. And I mm-hmm. put Iron Man, Captain America, Batman and Superman in a room. Shit, I'll throw Spider-Man in there. Everybody's gonna know who Superman is, and you guys can't make a movie with him. You get, you can't even announce a movie's being made. You gotta understand, okay? He made Henry Cavill made this movie called Mission Impossible Fall. I don't know if you've seen it. It's one of the greatest action movies in the last ten years, uh, with this guy named Tom Cruise. Okay, and uh, the guy who wrote and directed that movie is my favorite writer working today, named Christopher McQuarrie. Okay, he's fantastic. He did The Usual Suspects. He's done pretty much every Mission Impossible movie. He did Edge of Tomorrow. He's uh, he's amazing. He just did the Top Gun movie. He wrote that. The new one that just came out. Um. Yep. And Henry Cavill and him got to talking, and Christopher McQuarrie wrote a Superman script. This is a guy who, right now, as we speak, has maybe the biggest his wrote is the guy who's behind in terms of writing the most successful movie since the pandemic opened. <laughs> since theaters opened, okay, and he wrote a script in our at least a, a spec script, a pitch for a Superman movie. You know, because you only had yeah. one since two thousand freaking thirteen, and yeah. DC. Didn't even read it. They didn't even oh, care. They kicked him to the side. And, and, and uh, the, uh, they talked to McCory about it. And he goes, well, I'm not going to bring it up anymore because they didn't, didn't, they didn't reject my idea. They didn't even read it. So they're either incompetent or they don't like Superman, which makes no freaking sense to me. You have the, the guy. Christopher McCory right now is the guy. Okay? Yeah. He is the dude. Top Gun Maverick is phenomenal at this point and you're telling me you can kick him to the side imagine just just imagine this guys imagine this imagine this just just, just close your eyes all right christopher mccoy writes a superman script right it's probably going to be good because christopher mccoy nine times out of ten writes a pretty good freaking script okay you got yep. henry cavill who he's befriended because he made him the uh, spoiler alert, bad guy in mission impossible fallout right so they're friends all right mm-hmm. he's also best buddies with this little known guy named Tom Cruise. Okay? Imagine he puts Tom Cruise in a role. Imagine that role is Lex Luthor. Just imagine. Just imagine how good of a Superman movie that could have probably been. Probably been. Yeah. They didn't even look at it. They didn't, they didn't reject oh. it. They didn't even look at it. So my issue <laughs> in this <laughs> live version of DJ Fountain has issue is why does DC not like Superman? What is the problem? I don't know. How do you not they have do been... with Superman. <laughs> when the, was... Rock, the Rock's wife or ex-wife is his agent. Is Henry Cavill's agent? They're throwing yeah. questions at the Rock at the Black Adam uh, uh, uh-huh. conference like, uh... about Superman, and he can't. He doesn't want to like yeah piss off his bosses. But you know, the Rock wants Henry Cavill to be cast as Superman again. You know that yeah. it, it benefits him financially, and it be fant- they're like buds. And he yeah. can't say anything about it because of his freaking bosses, for some reason that I don't understand, don't want to make money off of Super. I'm, I'm giving you money. They're gi- they're trying. To- <laughs> mm-hmm. What is that movie where he goes? I'm, I'm giving it to you. And he's not yeah. even. They just don't want to take it. Why not make a Superman movie? Announce. Shoot. Why not just announce Henry Cavill as our Superman? The crowd goes wild. Everybody's happy. You, you could have him on a. You can have him via satellite. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wild. Like, why, why couldn't like? Oh, he didn't show up, but here he here is. He is. Like, he, right. you know, like you know. And look, you know what? I think I personally think, and I don't know if this is factually correct or not, but this is my personal opinion. Mm. You look at the 
evolution of Superman on film from 78 to what was, when was four ninety four. Yeah. 90. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I can't believe I remember that off the top of my head. You look at the evolution of Batman on film from 89 to 97. We all know because everybody in the world has, even though I reserve my own personal opinions, but everyone's opinion in the world is that three and four sucked on both characters. Right. Most people do not like the third. Most people. Well, four is not a meme, so everybody loves it now because, oh, Batman, I'm talking about, because, you know, it's a meme. But yeah. (laughs) It's horrible. Yes. (laughs) Okay. And and in my own defense, and I recently defended this on the most recent toy cast that is now online currently as of this recording, but in my own defense, the only reason why I, at 17 years old in high school, liked Batman and Robin was because Alicia Silverstone was on the poster in skin tight bat leather. Thank you very much. Well, hey, without Batman and Robin, you don't get the Dark Knight. So it it, it it's exactly. a means to an end. So I I, exactly. I I accept this. I accept its existence, but it's in it's an incredibly bad film. <laughs> yeah, no. I, hey, look, you know what? And that's the thing. Why can't like like what is this new predilection of not being allowed to like things that are bad? No, no, it's like, bad. Just yeah, just yeah. acknowledge that it's bad. As long as yeah. you acknowledge it's bad, you can like it as long as you want. Just don't oh, blow yeah. smoke up my ass and tell me it's good because it's not good. It's bad. It's funny bad. It's right, hilarious yeah. bad. It's meme bad. But it's bad. <laughs> and the sad thing is, along with another person that... Oh, God. Like... That film has the only song I ever listened to by w- that one artist that, you know, that kind of had a few oh, problems. Oh, yeah. Went, forgot. Yeah. yeah, your boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prison, oh, that prison song. Kelly. That artist is just prison like prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing with with the other actor slash comedian person. I I love him. I love his himself comedy routine, and I love the writers and every other cast member on the Cosby Show. But mm. <laughs> for me it's all and, and I said this recently I don't know if I've said this on because DJ has had the run of the place around here inside the studio inside <laughs> studio 2009 recently but for me it's all about the fiction it's all about the characters right like for me as a as a you know I was what when that show premiered 80 84 yeah so I was four years old so I grew up with it and it you know Purple bag and red bag. Purple bag is for all the houses you know. Red bag is for all the houses that you don't know. And then your parents test the candy at the end of the night. That's how I learned about wow, trick or treating. Well, your, your parents had a system. I'm, I'm just no, like, that's, what that's, what that's, what that's, that's what happened in the episode. <laughs> and, you know, you don't ever make egg salad the night before fifth, fifth, uh, uh, you turn five and you go into the first grade, <laughs> especially not by not put by putting it in the microwave. Uh, oh, <laughs> so the, yeah. So my point is, is that you know, we all have our, our our things, our our whatever, and the whole thing that you've been talking about is there hasn't been a Superman movie since 2013, and I personally think it's because. You know what I think. I told Go you ahead. what I think. Yeah. They don't so, like or they don't know well, how to yeah. make a Superman movie. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Like, okay, so they've had hiccups with Superman. Well, let's say Superman 3 is a hiccup. It's not – overall, it's not a horrible movie. But, you know, Superman 4 is ob- objectionably the worst out of the four of them. Just like Batman and Robin is is the worst out of the four of those, even though I – personally think returns is because that's a whole other bag of cats anyway what happened to superman in film he went from superman 4 to superman returns right a donna remake by uh, another guy who's canceled <laughs> mm-hmm. right but if you just look at the fiction you just look at the plot of that movie mm-hmm. and like he while it pointed out the fact that apparently Christopher Reeve is actually a, his version of Superman was kind of stalkery. Like Brandon Rouse's version of him in that film 
like, holy crap, yeah. on another level, <laughs> you know, for Clark. Like, Dean Cain ain't got nothing on Brandon Routh as far as Clark Kent goes. And how Man, Christopher Reeves was pointing out Lois Lane's underwear in the first that's Superman. Right. So. That's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, like that was a line that was written. So my point is, from four to returns to steal, mm-hmm. you've got two skipping stones to get to a movie that, honestly, the only thing that I liked about it was his parents – and the way they told the origin story. And Man of Steel you're talking about? Yeah. I don't want to, I can be here all day tearing apart yeah. that horrible yeah. movie, but yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the only thing I liked about Man of Steel was the casting mm-hmm. and the score. Uh, the we score is. Hans Zimmer's score. Hans Zimmer's score is, Hans yeah, Hans Hans Zimmer's yeah. score is amazing. It's probably yeah. one of the best scores he's ever done. So, uh, yes. The problem I, ha- uh, the problem I have is that. Even if I give you Man of Steel, again, I don't like that movie. Right, right, right. But if I give you Man of Steel, mm-hmm. and it's let's say it underperforms, it's still Superman. It's yeah. one of the most marketable it's, fictional yeah. characters of all time. And you don't have just one director. It's, it, you put Snyder in a box. Yeah, Matt, whatever. Matthew Vaughn wanted to make a Superman movie. They yep. rejected him. Christopher oh, McQuarrie, geez. who, again, I just brought up, who yep. is now riding high – as one of the the, the most successful uh, writers right Five, now, six, working, seven and eight. I mean, they didn't even read his thing. Like, so like, ser- it, like seriously, like the man had want to do it because yeah. if, if they don't know how to do it, you got two guys not even involved with you who are telling you, "I want to do it. I got an idea," and you're not even paying attention to them. Matt, Matt has, is, is successful yeah. too. He, he, yeah. He, he made Kingsman a, a name. He freaking yep. he he made probably one of the most be- the best X Men movies. So and and you, you're not even like entertaining this with yeah. the most again. I don't care. I love Spider Man. Yeah, but he's not as marketable as Superman. Superman. Like, People have tattoos of Superman on their freaking body. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. make a movie about him. I don't understand. Oh, and. Part of my point earlier was going to be, and we can move back into uh, Black Adam and Shazam 2, mm. uh, is that DC has always used Batman as the moneymaker. But they didn't DC- do that either this year. No, they didn't do that, that either. That's, 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 the that's absol- no, absolutely <laughs> true. You're right. I'm not saying you're, I'm just saying, like, from Man of Steel to whenever now is, like, they could have made. Look how many animated Superman films they've made oh, since no. 2013. A million no, they, of them. They, and they know how to make they know how to write Superman. They know exactly. how to write how Superman is. And I mean, Macquarie, you're right. Abs- but the man has a mission possible dance card. Five, six, seven, eight. Let the man tap already. I, I don't get it. I don't understand. That's why when I when I say they don't either know how to make a Superman movie or don't want to. Yeah. When I hear the thing about McQuarrie, it leans to they don't want to because it's not like this guy doesn't have bona fides. Yeah. He wrote the usual suspects. He's not like <laughs> he's not a piker. Okay. He knows yeah, what he's exactly. doing. <laughs> yeah. So he's if, not a he's not a luddite over yeah, here. Yeah. He's you not know, some guy. He so. just got off the street. He has Tom Cruise on speed dial. Mm-hmm. Okay. Skydance in on you, speed you, dial. You you'd think that Warner Brothers would jump on that, but oh, they no. played chicken with James Bond and won with the Mission Impossible series. Yep. So what are we talking about? And you don't take his calls. Yeah. You understand how easy it would have been for DC if they want they, they they're, they're getting this flack now that they they mm-hmm. kind of got blown o- o- away by Marvel. Just have people say stuff. You yeah. could have had Henry Cavill and. It, do you know how wild it would have been if Henry Cavill walks on stage with The Rock and they face oh, off? Absolutely. Just like one comes from one side, one comes from the other side. They just absolutely. face off. Yeah. They didn't even tease a movie. They're just there. Yeah. Just to show so, hey, I'm pay, back in the yeah, neighborhood. Yeah. Just yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. So so no, here's the thing. Like, so again, from the website that'll be in the show notes on the website for our website. Uh, bonus info noticed for 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 Black Adam. Ooh, <laughs> technical difficulties. Let's move on, shall we? You know, DJ, you mentioned a lot of things about Jokers, and apparently there have been a lot of technical difficulties. Thanks a lot. <laughs> 
it was just it was Black Adam and Shazam using electri- yes. electricity in their arms. <laughs> yeah, yes, or it was the old ladies in my building. Maybe one of them used a toaster and a microwave at the same time, and <laughs> and the power went out. So yes, Black Adam. As I was trying to say before, I got so rudely interrupted. Uh, the Rock entered the panel in midst of fog and lightning rising above the stage in his Black Adam costume, proclaiming, the DC Universe will never be the same again. Because anytime a WWE star is anywhere, it's again. <laughs> Jericho taught us that. It's again. <laughs> Apparently, they locked the final cut of the film last night, showing the cast it in preparation for today's panel. Lock, yeah, now, if you believe that, I, I got some well, swamp land to sell you because I got to work on all yeah. that special effects. Yeah, true. <laughs> but I mean, at least the okay, yes, they okay. By locked, maybe he means that primary he, pr- principal photography is probably not. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of the actual acting, and now here come all the special effects to do the real. Oh, wh- wh- I'm sorry, I didn't say that. so amidst everything that this podcast recording has gone through this evening uh i saw a story on the direct on my google pixel 6 pro feed and something about what they asked what they asked the, the whole superman thing right so they quoted hit the direct website quoted his response that's a great question. Don't threaten me with a good time because I'm going to answer that question. Well, I will say, as you guys know, because we're all in deep with this mythology, it's been an age-old question of who would win in a fight between Black Adam and Superman. Pound for pound, they are pretty close. I guess it probably all depends on who's playing Superman. I'm just going to say that and leave it at that. Because my ex-wife is Henry Cavill's agent. <laughs> that's what he should have think. That's what he should have finished what, the statement with. That's, yeah, that, that, that's yeah, that's probably how he should have. So that way, sites like the Direct and every other website didn't sit here and and say, "Oh my God, this this is supposed to mean that Henry Cavill is." In. Look, it, it's the whole. So you mentioned Captain America earlier. That's the whole thing with Cap- Captain America or Spider Man. Like, <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God! Uh, uh, oh God, I'm blanking on his stupid name. I want to say McGuire, but it isn't McGuire anymore. Tom Holland. Oh my God, Tom Holland <laughs> is no longer Spider Man because they got somebody else to voice the character in What If? Give me a freaking break! <laughs> How many Batmans have we gone through since Kevin Con? And it's a whole other. We, we we just need to create a rant cast for each other because seriously, <laughs> we're gonna sit here and rant all day. So yes. Black Adam, Shazam 2, Shazam Fury of the Gods. And that was it. The only thing And that was it for DC. I mean, imagine imagine this. Imagine in the DC panel is you add three more things, okay? You for one, you have the Black Adam panel, blah 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 blah. Everybody mm-hmm. leaves as the rocks getting up, the lights go out. Lights come back on, Henry Cavill standing there. The crowd loses their freaking mind. They do a little <laughs> WWE face off. And uh-huh. all Henry Cavill says is, Hey, I ain't going nowhere. And that's it. Cut to the next panel, right? Yeah. Why don't we promote, I don't know, another successful show that happened to come out this year that was by DC, but didn't talk about it at freaking Comic Con? Why don't we promote season two of The Peacemaker? Haven't done anything about that. John Cena's there. Have John Cena come out. James oh. is in the building, by the way, promoting oh. Guardians of the Galaxy. Come yeah. talk about Peacemaker. You don't got to even show anything. Just talk about where the show is going to go. You have uh, the, the, the lead and the director could have been there. The director was already there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close. Because the director now has his, his, his tentacles into both camps now. Right. Which is, yeah. which is, is fine. Kevin Feige doesn't yeah. care. He's fine with it. So no, absolutely. After yeah. that, Peacemaker. James Gunn doesn't go anywhere. He goes, oh, by the way, uh, after Peacemaker, I'm also working on this, the, the, which has already been talked about, the Suicide Squad yeah. sequel. Mm-hmm. Boom. Yep. Or whatever. Next yeah. one. Boom. That yeah. Now you have two good things. The crowd is going to lose their crap. You have Rock and John Cena and Henry Cavill in the same room. It's Yeah, like, really? Yeah. yeah. Cut to yeah. the next one. Hey, yeah. Shazam, Fury to Gods, whatever. Get that stuff out of the way. Who cares? Get the kids talking, blah, 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 blah. Show ends, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Matt Reeves comes out. 
Oh. Batman, the Batman 2, greenlit. That's all I have to do. You don't even have to tell me who it is. Just say they're going to grind. They've greenlit the movie. Just, they haven't even done that yet. They've yeah. the, the Batman greenlit. Done. Yeah. The yeah. panel now looks like a panel instead of yeah. Black Adam, Shazam, bye. <laughs> that, was, that was all yeah. they gave us. Yeah. That was yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I, and I'm dumb. These are executives that went to Harvard and Yale and Princeton and, and, and Cornell and Stanford, and they don't give a crap about promoting anything. And I'm thinking – I had to Google it before. As we were talking, I was like, is there a DC fandom event coming up? Maybe they're holding off all this. For the- no, there's none announced. So what are you holding off for? Why are you not announcing these things? Get, what is so – f- yeah. Feige's probably like, this is too easy. I shouldn't even have to do anything. <laughs> I, I could have just played the Wakanda Forever trailer and just walked away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, look. Here you go. Here's Wakanda Forever. Here's what was the other one? Uh, oh, the um, Green get Guardians of the Galaxy. He played Wakanda Forever. He played She Hulk. He played, uh, yeah. and he played some footage from Secret Wars. I, I think or Secret yeah, Invasion. So, Secret, Secret Invasion. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, but literally he could have just done that and been done. Said see yeah. all that DC, uh, D- 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 DC whatever the DC whatever. Yeah. Or, no, sorry, Disney Marvel, yeah. Expo whatever. D- oh D three D three. Yeah. Yeah. See you there, yeah. and I'll play the rest of it. He could have done that D twenty three or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. No, it could, he could have done that because uh, DC didn't really do anything. The best news I heard out of Warner Brothers was that Amanda Waller is going to be in Black Adam. I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, she's also in. The Peacemaker show. She's also in the Suicide Squad movie. James Gunn is literally standing right over there. <laughs> yep. what, what, what? I, I don't understand how this is this hard for them. And then they're looking around like, why is everybody crapping on our presentation? Because you didn't have one. You had Black Adam, which we already saw a trailer a couple, maybe a week, a month ago. Yep. And Shazam, who, I mean, I'm not, a, you haven't seen it. I'm not a huge Shazam fan. It's fine. It's the Ant Man of the DCEU. I don't, I don't really, yeah. I'm not against it. I just don't, I'm yeah. not super excited about it. But that's all you got. You got, you just come, you just came off of w- one of the best reimaginings of Batman since Batman begins. And you don't even talk about it. Talk about it. I, I saw an interview with Colin Farrell who he got the script for the Penguin. Uh, the first script, and he's excited. Have Matt Reeves pr- say, "Hey, Batman Two, greenlit. Uh, we're working on shooting Penguin next year." Here's Colin Farrell talk about it, and Colin Farrell could be via satellite because I know he's filming a movie. Yeah. You have yeah. sc- via satellite. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy because I saw the interview with Colin Farrell, which was not at San Diego Comic Con; it was at some other outlet. And he was, yeah. it got me excited. I was like, why is this not on San Diego Comic Con? He was just like, this is a great script. I'm, it's, it's, Colin Farrell is giddy. He loves his character. Have him talk about it in front of the people. Show him. You know, imagine if he wasn't busy and he came on, came on, uh, what you would call in the, the makeup. Yep. That's so amazing. That's probably going to win an Oscar for best makeup. Something. Yeah. Do anything. I want you guys to succeed. People think that I'm, you know, against DC. I love the Batman. It's still my favorite film this year. And they won't do anything. They just like they're in neutral. I don't understand. It was so deflating. Yeah. It, not even the Henry Cavill stuff. It's just they don't. I, 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 they have so much stuff and they don't do anything with it. They're they're filming that Blue Beetle stupidness right right now. I saw a, mm-hmm. a guy in a suit. Anybody want to talk about that? The Batgirl TV series with uh, Michael Keaton, I think, is supposed to be. Oh, Anybody yeah. talk about that? Anybody? Yeah. J.K. Simmons, isn't he Gordon in that? Anybody? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Yes. So we can continue to be dumbfounded by DC, and we are going to move on to Marvel because Marvel, I mean. They just needed to hit it, like you said. Do one, say one, say hit all he had to say. All he had to say. He didn't, he didn't even have to hit a single. He didn't even have to hit a single. He could hit a a, a, a bunt. bunt ground rule double, <laughs> ground rule double. Or, like seriously, like really. All he had to do was say Wakanda forever, and, drop the microphone, and walk off stage, and and leave, and leave. So. The end of phase four will be 
Black Panther, Wakanda Forever coming in 2022. Now, I do want to go through these right. in in order. Currently, She-Hulk is the next show. I somebody I don't remember who it was, and I, I, I some website on some fan page on Facebook, and I I just grabbed it myself. I know other websites out there probably have the the more centered version of it, but. I posted the 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 pictures of the phase four or phase five and phase six. Right. So, you know, Ant Man, they're gonna, you know, quantum boogaloo it up with quantum mania. <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey, hey, look, there's an episode of, of Phineas and Ferb called Quantum Boogaloo, and every time I see Quantum Mania, that's the first thing I, not a good I title. call it. It's not a good title. Well, yeah, it it is what it is. <laughs> so Phase four, like I said, ends with Wakanda Forever. We saw an official teaser for Wakanda Forever. Right. Uh, You know, so there is that. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. So basically, this is their family adventure for phase five. You know how I I feel about Ant-Man. I'm not mm -hmm. down on Ant-Man. I'm not up on Ant-Man. My yep. only issue with uh, this movie is Kang is supposed to be your new big bad. Mm-hmm. I, it's like I wouldn't put. Uh, th- how would I put this? <laughs> K- Kang seems like he wouldn't fit in this movie. This movie feels like mm-hmm. a very like tongue in cheek, you know, family like you just said, family adventure, fun, mm-hmm. happy. Kang's supposed to scare the shit out of you. He's supposed to be th- the next Thanos. Yeah. So yeah. I don't again. I haven't seen much of what they're gonna do. Maybe it, it fits right in. Maybe they're gonna take a more serious tone with Ant Man. Just in the two movies I've seen, Kang doesn't really fit. I, I would think it just matters. Yeah. I guess how Majors is gonna play him. I, I, I again, I'm not a huge. I, I, re, I wish Kang would have premiered in something more with a little bit more meat to me. Okay. Than yeah. Ant Man, which is like you know <laughs> the fun thing. It's the you know. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want you know showing up in like uh, you know uh, far from home. It's just like it, it's it's too much of a. He's supposed to be su- such a the next big bad, and you're with a you're with like you know the Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, it's yeah. like whatever. Bill Murray's in it, I guess. I don't know what I, that's going to be about. Yeah, we don't know what role Bill Modoc. Which I mean, I know who Modoc is. I, I know who Modoc is, but Modoc to me is an Iron Man villain, and it's like silly, but, he's a silly villain. <laughs> so yeah, why, well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, just look at Superhero Squad show. I mean, I know that's the, a silly the, show. The claymation yep. show, which was yep. canceled uh, yep. too soon. Oh, that that yeah. that was guy. I, I picture. Yeah. I don't picture him as like a serious, even though he's machine yeah, designed no, he, for killing. He, but whatever. He's, he's yeah, he's definitely not. So, Quantum Mania will burn. Yeah, Yes, Quantumania will be out February 17th, 2023. Right. Secret Invasion. Nick Fury is back on Earth and must now face the Skrull Invasion. Right. Oh, so it only took them uh, 2012. It only took them, what, 12 years to, to get to the actual Skrulls. I think there's. I'm sorry, I think it's the a, Yeah. This, this, is, this is a thing that another one that I, I, I think they. Mm-hmm. I have a little bit of an issue with Skull Invasion was a big freaking deal. And this just seems like they're just speeding past this. And they kind of dropped the ball on it with Captain Marvel, where uh, they made the scrolls good guys in that. And yeah. I'm like, when that happened, I was like, I guess that was the twist. Whereas all oh, the scrolls are good guys. Cause it was a twist for me because I've only mm-hmm. known the scrolls as evil. Well, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I thought they were gonna land the plane at the end where I think the the character of Talos he gets wounded, I think, near the end yeah. of the movie in front of his daughter. And at the time I'm like, oh, maybe maybe his daughter's a sc-. in the comic book, the scroll queen is the one that kind of precipitates the invasion of Earth with all these scrolls. And I was like, Well, maybe she's a scroll queen and she holds a vendetta because her father gets killed at the No, he's alive. Okay, okay, I guess we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> they kind of like breast he Talos lives and that's it. And I'm like, okay. So you're doing a scroll thing. I, I, one, this should have been this should be an event. This should be uh, not six episodes. The scroll invasion should be like over four movies. It's a big yeah. friggin' deal. So yeah. the the fact that they're gonna just squeeze it in like a six episode thing makes me a little worried, especially when no Avengers are gonna probably show up other than maybe Rhodey. 
So I, I yeah. So Ro- so according to this, like I said, Nick Fury back on Earth. Right. Rhodey makes several appearances out of armor, and still no next time, baby. It's still Cheetle who honestly oh, is to, the to Howard yeah. is in uh, off the deep end of himself. <laughs> so yeah, you know he's yeah, that's true. Uh, and this will be spring of 2023. Uh, Guardians Volume Three. I like that Gamora is the new leader of the Ravagers. I liked how they filmed five different endings, to, to, so they wasn't get, won't get spoiled because apparently a, mm-hmm. car- a bunch of characters are going to die. So they filmed endings where different characters die, so nobody will know which one is going to die, so it won't leak. I like that idea because James Gunn's a crafty son of a gun. The five endings thing makes me, and even though I, I don't think this is going to happen because of what's going on apparently in his own personal life, which I don't know all the details, but I hear five endings and I'm like, please tell me, Mr. Body, Tim Curry is no, going to no, show up. Not, in this like that, not like that. No, no, no. There, 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 there's going to be one ending, but they, he just he shot five, so no, <laughs> no, five. no dummy so will go. Oh, yeah, Drax gets murdered, so yeah. nobody will know exactly who gets, gets yeah. killed. That's the only reason. Yeah. And that, that'll be released May 5th of 2023. Echo, summer of 2023. Loki season two, summer of 2023. The Marvels, which was that supposed to be the new X-Men movie? No, that's I with Captain know. Marvel, Miss Marvel, and yeah, Monica Rambeau. Yeah, I, <laughs> but what was that story that came out, I don't know, a week or so ago where they were all like, Oh, they're not calling the new X Men movie X Men. They're calling it the I, I I don't know, and I don't care. And they're calling it mutants, I believe. Or oh, the oh mutants. that's that, that's right, the mutants. Yeah. Well, we got the Marvels and the mutants. Okay, when the Marvels met the mutants, who knows? Uh, July twentieth, twenty twenty three, for the Marvels. Blade, November third, twenty twenty three. I don't know. They they, I, they didn't announce a director for that yet, right? Mm, I only, yeah, the only information I have here is a release date, and the only information I heard Kevin say on stage was a release date. Because if because if they had a director for it, he would have brought them out on stage like almost every Probably, other yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we know Mahershala; he was in Eternals for uh, he vo- did a voice over in Eternals, so we know Mahershala is okay. still Blade, uh, which is good because Mahershala is awesome. You got an Oscar winner, uh, two time Oscar winner, I think, as one of your stars. And I like the fact we've kind of brushed over Echo and stuff, but we're bringing well, we're, mean, we're bringing it down. We need to bring it down yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So instead of like the I mean, the I only is in danger. The multiverse is in danger. Let's bring it down a little bit so we can you know savor these heroes a little bit. Yeah. I only I only kind of because again based off the information that we have here for for us to be able to talk about this is basically whatever they've gotten from the panels and so far Echo only has a release date Loki season two to my knowledge only has a release date like there if there were plot details it would be in here because there's every other plot detail for the ones that we know about right well I mean this Echo is probably going to lean into the next thing you're probably going to announce because I'm pretty sure. Uh, two certain yeah. actors are going to be in Echo who are also getting their own show. <laughs> so that, that, Heart, that's yeah. what the Echo is. No, not Ironheart. Uh, uh, Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk. Those are. Oh, that's yeah. That's down. That's down a little bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to yeah, definitely no, pro- definitely be in Echo because Echo exists through them anyway. So oh well, yeah. yes. I mean, absolutely. That's the whole. That's the whole devilish universe there. Right. Yeah, so Blade, I I did not see Eternals. I probably will never. I will probably don't read worry. Yeah, yeah. I'll, no, 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 tell no, no, I'll tell you what Blade does I'll tell you what Blade does in Eternals right now. Save you some time and, and, and some boredom. Okay. Uh, he uh, John Snow f- finds the Ebony Blade because he's the character Black Knight or whatever. And as he picks it up, you hear Mer- Blade say, "Are you ready for that, Mister?" I forget his character's name. You just hear him okay. talk. You don't see him at all. He's like apparently okay. in the room somewhere. I don't. I don't know what his connection with the Black Knight is or whatever. But that's the only part of that. That's the and nobody even knew it was Blade. Somebody had to. I think oh. somebody had to come out and say it was. I think uh, Chloe Zhao had to come out and say, "Oh yeah, that was Mahershala's voice. He, he's playing Blade." Okay. But that's the only okay. part of Blade you get in that. But yeah. You know. So all right. So if that's all we have. <sighs> Is it wrong that part of me wants to see 
and I know this goes against all of the Blade mythology, mm. but is it wrong for me to want to see old Blade as his mentor? Wesley? Yeah. I mean, if I had to guess, they'd probably put him in there somewhere. But the problem is that Wesley's not the most um, stable person right now. Cooperative person to work with. So if he's, yeah. if he's willing to take second fiddle to Mahershala, yeah, I'm, all, I'm yeah. all for it. I don't know if he'd be able to do that because if I want to back anybody up into that character right now, I think Mahershala is one hell of a good choice. Okay. Uh, so, hey, you know, again, it's just, I, I've seen, like one of these days. Why is it every time that I record with you, I end up having all these damn pod. I'm like, one of these days we got to do this. One of these days we got to do this. One of the, <laughs> Like, like literally, like we need to just do a whole Wesley filmography episode. <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding, because the man, regardless of what is going on with him currently or whatever, he's fine. He's just you know he's. He, he, oh, I know, but like you know, you hear these stories about these actors and these directors, and some are more monstrous than others, and somebody you know usually just goes you know crazy or whatever right. and you know it is what it is from what i know so. from what i know when he did uh, what we do in the shadows uh season one he did a little cameo mm-hmm. on there and what i heard uh, how they had to get him to do it he's a very demanding guy so i don't know if yeah. he's going to be willing to be not the character he pretty much put on the map he, in wesley's mind which is pretty true He's the reason Marvel exists. <laughs> Blade I mean, put Marvel yeah. on the map. So, yeah. he, I mean, he, if you ask Wesley, you want to be in Blade, the movie Blade? Am I playing Blade? It's probably what Bless is going to say. <laughs> if I'm not playing Blade, he might be like, eh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good. So I, if he's in there, I'm all for it. Put Wesley as old yeah. man, make him Whistler. I, I'm, I'm all for that. I just don't know if they're mm-hmm. going to do it. And if I don't, if we don't get Wesley, I'm still happy because I got, we got Mahershala. Mahershala is awesome. So, yeah. Oh no! See, like I don't want to make him Whistler. You want to make him? I what, want. A, a, I want him to. I want him to be him. Oh, I mm, want, basically, mm. I want to do an old man Steve, but an old man Wesley. Nah, <laughs> oh. I'm not for that. Okay, I don't like that idea because then, because okay, well. I, I, then, then Mahershal is never playing Blade. He's playing Blade Sons or some shit. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, the release date for that is November 3rd of 2023. Remember, folks. Oh, wait, that's not till a year from now. Yeah. I was going to say, remember, go vote, but can't vote until next year. No. Uh, Ironheart release date is fall of 2023. I don't know how they're going to do that without Tony Stark because he was, he was a big deal in the yeah, comics, but I mean, they have their ideas. I have a feeling they'll do something with it. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm not over the moon about just, it. Just based on Endgame. Just based on Endgame, I can see them making up something where she has a whole suitcase of video files. You better hope. You, are you, are you going to be paying a certain someone to make those video well, files? Because you're going to. Like it's so like I'm you don't work for oh, free. Yeah, friends. Yeah, you don't work for free. Shit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Damn it! You know your idea is a great one. You, you, AI, you know, you're the not supposed to ruin a good idea. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea. Just know that the idea costs money. <laughs> you better yeah, find, you better call you better call Susan Downey and yeah. uh, seeing that she's his agent and say hey and his wife and uh, hey uh, <laughs> you mind doing a whole bunch of AI uh, Jarvis stuff yeah. for uh, Ironheart TV series with six episodes on Disney Plus and hope that yeah. price is right because last I checked uh, Robert Downey Jr. gets broke off. Boatloads. You should see how much yeah. he got paid for Homecoming, and he was only oh, barely in it. So yeah, yeah. I, I, again, great idea. Okay. I hope they do it. I don't know if there are. <laughs> Let's head to the Coven of Chaos yeah. then. All right, so Coven of Chaos. Agatha gets her own show. Yay! Okay, Catherine Hans show. awesome. I'm not super excited about the show, but I love Catherine Hans, so I will watch it because Catherine Hans awesome. Okay, so let let me ask you because mm. I I personally don't care. I I personally for like, the mood about the you know I love her she's great right, as a right, character no, 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 right. but what I'm saying is like what I'm about to say is how do you feel about titles because I remember when they first announced this as the House of Harkness and now it's the Coven of Chaos yeah. like does that like and for me that doesn't really mean like either way I'm probably sadly not going to watch it because 
I was on Wanda's side the whole time. I, I so <laughs> if it was up to me, I'd have done. Uh, you know how there's a, 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 this is a rough take here, but I've uh-huh. never been a huge fan of either Doctor Strange movie. But I love the character of Doctor Strange when he shows up and stuff. He's fantastic yeah. in Ragnarok. He's fantastic in Infinity War. I like when he's a seasoning of a movie. I wish Agatha would have been that. Where she didn't oh, need a okay. show, she would just show up. Right. I think yeah, she's she would uh, just, that's yeah. almost like the Hulk, where the Hulk doesn't have his, but that's because of licensing issues. But Hulk is good when he shows up, or or uh, Doctor Strange is good when he shows up. He doesn't yeah. need his own thing. Doctor Strange, yes, he probably needs his own thing. But Agatha doesn't need a show for me. I love the character. I wish she would just show up and stuff. Like if they were doing a Scarlet Witch movie or something, yeah, or a, yeah. Uh, whatever something with the X Men and Agatha show the Catherine Han showed up. I th- I love Catherine Hahn as Agatha. Wherever they put her, I don't think TV shows like you know the greatest idea. But they're they're they're, they're mining for content. I'll watch it because I like her. She I'm yeah. only watching it because I like her. I don't know. Yeah. I, I my expectations on how good the show is going to be. Shrug. I have no freaking idea. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And, I'm not over the I'm about just, Yeah. I'm. You know. But she's great. You. Yeah. I mean, if you give me my idea back Mm -hmm. thank you yes and say 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 that you know he's whether it has to do with his wife who's his agent or not Mm -hmm. but say he's kind of mellowed out over the last couple of years and look i get it the man is worth what the man is worth and that's fine Mm -hmm. but i would rather watch a tech show that, this is one of the reasons why I've never gotten into that boy wizard. Like <laughs> I said this on I said this on the last episode of Toycast too. Oh, you you come to me with Harry Potter hate. I hate Harry Potter. I, no, I'll no, say no, it. No, 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 I'll no, no. Hey, no, that's fine. Hey, Absolutely. Hey, everybody listening, come at me. I've never liked Harry Potter. I love Alan Rickman. I, I've never watched him play anything in Harry Potter. <laughs> never, and I never will. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I don't have hate for the character. I hate him. <laughs> Okay, okay. DJ hates Valentine him. at trying to be DJV on Twitter <laughs> oh, hates Harry me. Potter. I have okay. asked many times okay. to do my Alan Rickman impersonation for Snape, so, and I said, no. You know why? I hate Harry Potter. <laughs> so my personal thing with Harry Potter is neither positive nor negative. My second. I am Okay, yes. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Mine is more of if you put like you know how the and I hate these things, but you know how Facebook like <sighs> chain letters, folks, used to be letters that you could never break the chain, or else, oh my God, one of your limbs was going to fall off in an email chain. Facebook does these things too, where it's like make me choose between two things, and if you put two things in front of me and I make a choice, that's my choice. In the 80s, as a child, I chose Transformers. Have I seen G.I. Joe? Yes. Will I watch G.I. Joe? Yes, eventually. But my fandom started with Transformers. Mm -hmm. In the year 2000, I was living in Biloxi, Mississippi. I went into the, at that time, well, yeah, yeah, they're still around. Uh, Well, obviously, they're still around. I went into a Books a Million, and I talked to the, 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 at that time, I was 20 years old, so I'm sure this lady was maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. So slightly older lady at the, at the cashier counter, and I told her what I liked to read, which at that point in time was like Hardy Boys novels and John Grisham novels and Dean Koontz and stuff like that and whatever else. And, and you know, Fear Street from R.L. L. Stein from the 90s or whatever. You know, I just graduated high school. Give me a break. You know, and she's like, oh, okay, I'll point you into two directions. She gave me two books. She gave me, she, she basically didn't even give me two books. She gave me two options. She said a boy wizard or a former lingerie buyer turned bounty hunter. Well, at 20 years old in the year 2000, can you figure out which one I chose? (laughs) I don't even know what that is, but I'm interested. I'll tell you in a second. So, yeah, I chose the former lingerie buyer turned bounty hunter. And ever since I've made that choice, I have stood by that choice. Never, re- regardless of whatever the hell 
beliefs the author had, whatever. I don't give a shit. No, I, 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 I didn't like Harry Potter from before the movies. I'm not a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, okay. I, I know J.K. Rowling's off her nut, but I, I don't take that away. I still don't like Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> not a Harry okay. Potter fan. <laughs> so, yeah, I've never read a, a, a drop of the boy wizard. I don't ever care to. Now, the character who is the former lingerie buyer turned bounty hunter is Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum novels. Mm-hmm. Sadly, only ever got one movie, but those books don't need movies. Uh, Catherine Heigl played Stephanie in uh, One for the Money. I forget when that released. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, she plays a New Jer- a Trenton, New Jersey bounty hunter. Okay. You know, so it's it's hilarious. It's her and her family and all these, you know, she, she does uh, bail bonds for her cousin uh, Vinny. And it, it's a whole thing and whatever. So, yeah. So for me, like with choices, it's like Agatha Harkness over Blade or Agatha Harkness over Ironheart, even though I don't know, but I know that's part of obviously Tony and whatever. They're gonna have they're gonna have to give a harder for that show Agatha Harkness. I mean, I I love Catherine Hahn and I love the character Agatha, uh, and she has many connections with the X Men and stuff like that. But yeah. they're gonna have to bring a whole bunch of other stuff into that show for us to get it, it to get an audience. So we probably have to wait and see who else, who's the villain, who else is gonna show up at this time. Is it gonna be any more X Men uh, hints to it or whatever? Because at sight unseen, if it's just Agatha and witchcraft and all that stuff, I don't know if it's gonna catch on. It might be another Miss Marvel situation where it has a very niche audience. But you know. Again, I'm not rooting against it. I love Catherine Hahn. She's fantastic in everything she does. So I will probably watch it mainly because of her. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Up next, yeah, let's see. Um, well, you know, we're 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 in the devil universe, so we're gonna be born again with Charlie and Vincent and The only everyone. thing that I actually really gave a crap about. <laughs> <laughs> of this whole thing i was even what kind of forever i was like okay good i mean not, this is before i saw the trailer but i was just like yeah yeah, yeah just tell me is, is charlie back just tell me if charlie and vincent are back you tell me charlie and vincent are back i i, I can turn it off i can go back to sleep i'm happy mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all, all i wanted <laughs> yep it's kind of like you know at, at the end of, and and i know this is gonna piss you off because i am who i am and you are who you are it's like me checking like the last 10 seconds of the new England Miami game and making sure my Patriots beach or dolphins <laughs> and then just, just rolling over and, and going back to sleep. Like, okay, they're going to win. Okay. Yeah. The last 10 seconds, nothing stupid is going to happen. Like happened at the giants Patriots super bowl. Of, oh God. Don't I, I, I'll, I'll tell, tell you. All right. So daredevil born again, Charlie Cox. I was just, I was tweeting out as this Vincent was happening, Nof- and I was sitting yeah. there, and I was like, "If Kevin Feige brings out Vincent Nofri and Charlie Cox right now, this oh. this freaking place would explode." Thankfully, he didn't yes. not, because he didn't have to. Again, he <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't but uh, if that would have happened, holy! Yeah. Cow, could you imagine what would have happened? It would have been up there. But yeah, I was super excited. And Vincent Nofri has already tweeted out, and he's, hey. he yeah. he tweets out, uh, mm-hmm. "Okay, Mr. Murdoch," which is uh, if it's in the Nofri uh-huh. escape, it's so freaking good. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't, I, I don't like what they did with him in Hawkeye. They kind of uh, nerfed him a little bit, but I, I mean, I understand why they did, but I, he's not going up against the devil. He's going up against a guy who is hurting still, and a girl who just stepped into this role. It's, it's the kingpin. He don't give I a understand. damn. I, I understand. He cut off a I man's see. head with a car. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I understand that I agree with you. However, I'm saying I think they, quote unquote, hobbled him for the audience that like maybe maybe people watching Hawkeye aren't us. Maybe people watching Hawkeye have only seen Hawkeye, they haven't seen what we've seen with the three seasons that we got on, you know what I mean? So I get it is all I'm saying. So yes, Charlie and Vincent will return. The show will be 18 episodes long. I love it when they give us uh, episode uh, uh, 
amounts. I was hoping it would be 12. I think 12 is a sweet spot for this show. But if it's 18, I think it's because they're going to be trying to put in some other well, characters like uh, a, a, absolutely. a certain character name. Uh, Jessica might be popping up in there. So uh, I, I think that's yeah. why they're adding that much yeah. time. Because I think 12 is good. 12 is the yeah. sweet spot. 12 is... Yeah. You got arc in that six. You don't have any time to do anything. That's why I'm pissed off about the Secret Wars thing, but uh, <laughs> Secret Invasion. I keep saying Secret Wars. Yeah, uh, I know. But I know. yeah, twelve. I think you, you get is eighteen is a lot of time. That's a lot of episodes. That's like arrow length. So it makes me think that they are doing way more stuff. I just want them guys. Listen to me, Kev, Mister Feige, <laughs> KF. Take your time, okay? You have Vincent D'Onofrio, one of the greatest actors of all time, who loves playing Wilson Fisk. Just ask him. Mm -hmm. Tweet at him. He will tweet back at you. He's from Hialeah, Florida, by the way. Uh, Ask him. He loves playing Wilson Fisk. So just take your time. Give him something to chew on. What pissed me off most about him in Hawkeye is you didn't give him a monologue. The greatest thing about Gennafio playing the Kingpin is his monologues. Mm -hmm. YouTube some of them. They're Oh, no, I know. <laughs> they are terrifying. Oh, I, I know. The scene just my, my favorite scene of him is him in it's him and Char- him and Charlie, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Daredevil, Mr. Murdoch, in prison. And Vincent yep. D'Onofrio is chained to a cha- a table. And Charlie think or Charlie, uh da- Daredevil thinks he has Vincent D'Onofrio or Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> then, so, Murdoch thinks he has Kingpin on the ropes because he his his wife Kingpin's Vanessa is in another yeah. country and Murdoch tries to extort the Kingpin by threatening to mess up uh, her extradition <laughs> or something. And I guess he didn't understand that the one thing Kingpin yeah. will murder the world for is Vanessa is Vanessa. So he, <laughs> the Kingpin breaks out of his shackles easily, by the way, and just oh, keeps slamming Matt Murdoch's head against the table as he's yeah. lecturing him about, I will kill Everyone you love, everyone of you, he, he, he starts with say her name again, say her name one more time. Uh-huh. He's slamming him. I was like, just and it, he's, he's hurting him and he's telling him what he's going to do to him. And at the same time, he's declaring his love for Vanessa all in one scene. It's so good. Yeah. They didn't give me any of that. Give me that. Give me that stuff. Yeah. That's I, what makes yeah. the kingpin scary is that he oh. doesn't care. <laughs> he will destroy okay, everything. So- what I what I so out of eighteen episodes, when okay, so when my friend Allison and I did this because she's a huge Hawkeye fan, we covered on this podcast we covered all six episodes of Hawkeye, mm-hmm. and at the end we were like, okay, he's not exactly moving. He as in him as in the kingpin, not Vincent, but the character of the kingpin isn't moving the same way he moved in Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Something must, like, because again, the big thing with with uh, with Hawkeye is that it's centered around the the blip. Right. Sort of, sort of centered around the blip, but, you know. So, maybe something happened to him. Physically, I, I, I get it. I'm not talking yeah. about him being physical. I mean, he is physical. I want right. him to be scary. That's right. the no, thing I, that I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. He doesn't have to be agree. beating you up. Yeah. He can be that. He can do that by threatening everything you love, which he's done many yeah, times. But, yes, but the difference is he's threatening other adults. He's not. No, he's done that with uh, Karen. Karen is no. He's not, she's not much older than uh, uh, Katie Bishop. And he sat in a okay. room with Karen. And terrified me, and didn't yes. lay a finger on her, <laughs> and didn't touch okay. her. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, it's been a while since I've seen. Oh, good. Go, fuck fu- no, that are- hole of Vincent D'Onofrio playing the kingpin. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, I, I sort of remember this, but literally, the one out of that whole show, the one thing that I will point to for an origin story. Is season I think it's season one episode eight Shadow in the Shadows in the Glass because mm-hmm. I remember that title like it's it, it's no tomorrow and yeah no I I agree and I'm you know I'm I'm all here for it like I said it's not necessarily what the episode number is I'm just glad that they t- 
told us an episode number, right, not right, right, just right. I'm, I'm, again, that just I, left us to assume to say, oh, it's going to be six episodes. If there are eighteen episodes of pure gold, I'm all for it. I just worry, I worry. Yeah. I just, I, I want them to give me scary, well written kingpin yep. again. Marvel in this phase that that King Kevin Feige thankfully put to a close has been, let's just say, not well written. It's (laughs) not at all. So when when you have this guy who has been scaring the crap out of me since Full Metal Jacket, who loves playing (laughs) the Kingpin, who the Kingpin in every facet is a terrifying character. He terrifies Spider Man, the Punisher, Daredevil. He's scary. Just yeah. give him something to chew on. Don't 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 nerf him. They, they just just give him something so, to chew on. That's all I want. So spring twenty twenty four for Born Again for Daredevil, and then we come to the NWO and no Hulk Hogan and his suburban commandoism did not jump into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We have Captain America: New World Order. Sam Wilson as Captain America. It's his shield now. That's all I will say. <clears throat> yep. Uh, That's all that needs to be said. It was passed up or da- however you want to say it. It was passed up, passed down to him, whatever. Steve ain't around no more, folks, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's around, but he's off living his old life with his wife and whatever. Uh, you know, he, he and Peggy are whatever. Peggy's gone, know. but yes. Okay, well, <laughs> shit. You know? Died in Civil War. It's hard <laughs> keeping this stuff straight sometimes, but yes. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, May 3rd, 2024. Please get a good writer. I don't even know who's writing it, but please. I, I don't even think it ha- – I don't know if it has a writer. You got, I'll have you to got, check. Guys, when you have something I, – I, 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 me being greedy asks for a good writer for Kingpin. But when you have somebody taking on the mantle of Captain America who happens to be black, you can't give me Falcon and Winter Soldier writing. You got to give me better writing than that because that's not good writing. Give me good writing. Please write it well. And people will accept him. When you write it poorly, people are going to have ammunition to go at him. So please write it, Ben. Write it good. Write, get a good. Get a good writer. Just please. Just, <laughs> or at least give me a writer that give me a good script. I, I need. I need it more than the. You have to do better, Senator speech, which was really poorly written. It just made him look bad. I was like, come on, man. This is this is Anthony Mackey. He's a very, very, very talented man. Give him some. Give him. Give him a good script, please. I, I beg of you, <laughs> guys. This is 2022. This is the year of the bad script, apparently, except for two movies, three movies, maybe. Every other freaking film, Thor, Doctor Strange, these scripts have been piss poor. Let's focus on the writing, guys. Let's focus on writing, writing some scripts where you go, wow, that was uh, everything makes sense. It's all good. <laughs> Holy crap. Let's do that. Especially with something as important as Captain America. I don't know what the heck he's going to fight. I don't know who he's going to fight. Bucky will probably be there. Uh, though they should be calling him the White Wolf. That was easy. They could have fixed, but it didn't because yeah. and poor writing. But uh, yeah, just get a, get, get a good script. Come on. Yeah, so far, other than Mackie joining the cast and Julius Ona yeah uh chosen to direct the film in july of, of i think he of directed some falcon and the winter soldier episodes that's probably why probably was chosen apparently um i don't know uh but yeah like literally all is it like i just googled new world captain america new world order and the only thing that pops up is is the fact that the director so yeah. here's hoping they get some good writers and then thunderbolts ends phase five oh, it's another one uh, you got Baron Zemo. This is essentially okay. This is this movie, which I didn't know was a movie. I had to look and say, "Why really a movie?" This movie <laughs> is going to hinge on, or it was essentially created because everyone likes, even though the movie was not that great. Uh, everyone likes uh, Florence Pugh's uh, White Widow. Everybody likes her. She's great. She's yeah. one of the highlights of the Hawkeye show. Okay, her relationship yeah. with Kate Bishop was probably the best thing of the show. Right? Yeah. And everybody likes Baron Zemo. 
everybody likes Baron Zemo. Okay, so oh, absolutely, yeah. that is what this show, this movie, I keep saying show, was created for. It's to highlight. Let's give Florence Pugh a movie, movie, but we won't. We can't make it a Black Widow movie because we just did that. Why would we just make a Thunderbolts movie and we'll just put Florence <sighs> Pugh front and center? Because I guarantee you, that's what this is. <laughs> This is, we're going to get Zemo, we're going to get Florence Pugh, we're probably going to get Blonsky or, or somebody, it's another a big heavy guy, they need, a, they need a strong guy. I think what She-Hulk is leaning on to is Blonsky. Uh, you're going to get uh, US agents, you're going to get those, that thing, but make no mistake, I'm pretty sure this is going to be Florence Pugh, um, David Brule uh, centric, with a little Julia Louis-Dreyfus thrown in there. Um, but yeah, I think this will be good if uh, they lean into the because this is a, Thunderbolts is essentially people who don't know it's kind of like Marvel's version of Suicide Squad without the exploding heads, but yep. they are kind of bad guys pretending to be good guys kind of situation. So uh, yeah, I, I I think this could be this could work uh, because it's going to be centered around her and yeah. and Dave, Dave Brule who I think I mean the one thing I did like about Falcon and Winter Soldier was he hitting his stride with that character. I think he really understands Zemo now. Uh, I want to see more of him. He's great. Do that. <laughs> that will be fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then Phase Six, Daniel Brule. I think Look, I did call him David. Duel. Daniel Brule. Sorry. Yeah, it's not Dave. It's, Dave. It's, Dave. Dave. Dan. <laughs> like Zemo. Seriously, I'm like. Uh, uh, are the rest of the Foo Fighters coming? Watch, uh, watch Rush. He's fantastic in Rush. He's fan- Daniel Brew is great in everything. He's great. There you go. He's even awesome. in the Kingsman movie, which I don't know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, and then all the way through 2025, Phase Six, we get the teasers of Fantastic Four, Avengers: The Kang Dynasty, and Inven- and Avengers: Secret Wars. <sighs> so here's my thing. No, I don't know how cuz I don't know whatever. Uh-huh. I'm 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 just an idiot. Uh-huh. Obviously Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars are films uh-huh. cuz they're not going to just do an Avengers television show. Never going to happen, they... no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So, I I'm sure and you're more than welcome because you you've already stated sp- just like me if I state something for myself, that's what it is mm-hmm. for myself. Mhm. I think you're going to be okay with whatever the six episodes are for Secret Invasion because it's going to lead to Secret Wars. Sure, I guess. They're kind of unrelated. I but I mean, yeah, but I mean... <laughs> Scroll Invasion and Battle World are kind of unrelated, but sure, I... I whatever. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> I care about one thing and one thing only coming out of those three things you just named. One thing, one word, one thing only that I care about that you just named out of Fantastic Four, Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars. There's only one thing DJ Valentine gives a crap about. Okay? One Mm -hmm. word. Four letters. Mm -hmm. Doom. (laughs) If you make Dr. Doom work, DJ Valentine somewhere will be smiling. If you make Dr. Doom not work, again, for the second, this will be the third time, DJ Valentine will be pissed off. (laughs) Very, very pissed off because we're talking about the greatest villain in comic book history. Okay, so do not mess up Doom, Doctor Doom. Somebody was, I was, I, I mentioned it, and they were like, "Oh, you know, Doctor Doom has a Fantastic Four villain." Wake up, Thanos is a piker compared to Doctor Doom. Th- Doctor Doom, his name is Doctor Doom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are we talking yeah. about here? What was I mean, Trump. The name is Mister Sinister. This is Doctor Doom. <laughs> He went to evil medical school to get a doctorate and being a doom. This is Dr. Doom. He has diplomatic immunity for Christ's sake. Okay. This guy is awesome. So if Secret Wars leads to Dr. Doom and Fantastic Four leads to Dr. Doom and they cast a good Dr. Doom, I'll be happy. If they bungle Dr. Doom one more time, I will be very, (laughs) very, 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 very very angry. I don't even care if they bungle Fantastic Four. Just make Doctor Doom work because Doctor Doom works without the Fantastic Four. I want the Fantastic Four to work. Yay, good. Hopefully, I love the Fantastic Four when they're working, but they, you know, for some reason, don't know how to make them work. But if they fail and Doom is good, I, I'll take it. (laughs) I just want Doom to work. Please make Doom work because he's not just a Fantastic Four villain. He's a Marvel villain. 
Iron Man yeah. has had problems with Doctor Doom. Spider Man has yeah. had problems with Doctor Doom. The X Men has problems with Doctor Doom. Galactus has had problems with Doctor Doom. Thanos has had the problems with Doctor Doom. Everyone's yeah. had problems with Doctor Doom. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, exactly. So yes. Make- so okay, who? Julian McMahon has been the only Doom, right? That we've had. No, you had the uh, 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 the guy from the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, Oh, and fantastic! Yeah, yeah. Fan, okay, Fan yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Yeah, I, who I, they, I didn't. Who they didn't want to name Doctor Doom? They had to do it in the ADR because they were ashamed of making the character because they didn't oh freaking do God. any research. They did a Deadpool yeah, to him so. where it was like we're going to call him uh, Doctor Domstad or something, and then people got pissed off, and it, it's stop right, yeah, messing okay. up Doctor Doom. If you ever want so, to go down a rabbit hole, <laughs> okay. Just look. If you, he's a Mary Sue of villains. Like the dude, <laughs> the dude does it all. Just look at yeah. some of the bona fides of this guy. He runs his own country. He has mm-hmm. pieces of the cross Jesus was crucified on, just in case he runs into vampires. He's second in line to be the Sorcerer Supreme. The man has bested Mephisto, the living embodiment of Satan. The Doctor Doom is one of the greatest villains of all time, and they've screwed him up twice. Okay. How do you mess this up again? I, you, uh, we've been on this. We've yeah. been on this thing. <laughs> how well, I don't mess that, I don't. Mike. How do how how do you do it? <laughs> how do you I, mess I, it up? I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. And and look, I've only ever seen the first two films. I throw them out. Throw them in the garbage. It never happened. Look, look here, okay? Never happened. Without, without four and rise of the civil, civil, wow, silver surfer, we wouldn't have gotten the Captain America we so richly deserve. Sure. Johnny, jo- sure. Johnny Storm becomes right. Captain America. Perfect okay? casting. Chris Evans is a great Captain America, no doubt. Okay. It's okay. wash because they destroyed the greatest comic book villain of all time. <laughs> all right, and that's fine, and I understand that. But okay, it's, when when did Foreign Rise come out? Four I, I was like two thousand. The dark day in history. Whenever there was an apocalypse oh, and the so, sun went behind the moon, <laughs> that's when those movies came out. I, I swear to God. <laughs> I, oh, what a bad movie. Oh, that's so bad. So, Oof. you know what? For, for again, and I prefer to look at things in the time that they were made, and it was, you know, 2004, 2000. Ooh, the. Mm, if they can have a guy named Doctor Strange, you can have a guy named Doctor Doom. Stop being ashamed yeah. of the comic 2005, book. No, 2005. <laughs> 2005 and 2007. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that I give that film now is either either film is that I think Darren Norris was a good or whatever his name is. I think Silver Surf because if you're coming from where I'm coming from, coming from I only know this from the 1994 Fox Marvel cartoon series, the Silver Surfer in that was okay it wasn't good but for me the greatest thing about those first two films is johnny and ben because at that time in 2005 we were in the middle of watching the greatest fx show ever the shield the shield yeah. and then all of a sudden vic Mackey becomes the thing oh it's great crap he great. basically yeah it's great basically has the Basically, has the voice from it's not the voice from the cartoon show, but you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you hear, you hear, Vic not, Mac hey, and, hey, hey, don't get me wrong, no, 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 I know, Chickless is fantastic at Spring Grim, I have no problem with that, <laughs> yeah, I know, I have no problem with uh, it, it's just as Jimmy else. Storm, that was fine, yeah, I don't even have problems with Julie McMahon as Doom, even though he's supposed to be European, but whatever, <laughs> yeah, I, even, I have problems with everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else they created. I agree. Yeah, and 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 I agree. I mean, you know, I have a problem with Galactus being a cloud. I have a problem with Silver Surfer being nerfed. I have a problem with Doctor Doom being nerfed. I have a problem with <laughs> Jessica only- Alba as Sue Richards. I or Sue, yeah, Sue Storm, whatever we want to call her. Yeah, I, I have a problem with the script in general. Uh, yeah. I have no problem with the uh, Michael Chiklis uh, being grim. That's fine. I have no problem with the uh, Chris Evans 
as Johnny Storm, even though he'd make a better Captain America. I have a problem and with the did. writing. Is this horrible? Yeah, and no, then no, we don't even get me started on the Josh Trank Fantastic for that stuff. No, 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 flame no, no, dumpster no. fire I, on wheels. I've, I've <laughs> never even seen it, so I don't even care. I don't think he's seen uh, it. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. He made it, but you know, he made half so. of it. Remember, that was the one yeah. when he got fired from. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he saw he made half oh. of it, so I have a feeling he never watched oh. it either. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Uh, this has been one hell of a long episode, folks, just for us to go over San Diego Comic Con 2022. I, man, so much stuff. Don't ruin Doom. And, look at me. And, Feige, look at me. Look at me. Don't ruin he Doom. He can't see you. Can, this is audio. Feige, you can see me. You have powers. <laughs> you have magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I have a feeling he won't though. I have a feeling Kevin Feige loves Fantastic Four. I, I think I think he loves yeah. that universe. I think he's just had, never had an opportunity to fix it. And yeah. uh we haven't even gone over the X-Men stuff, which they, they're doing the, the animated oh. series. But uh Yeah, X-Men ninety seven. Yeah. yeah. I I because that's kind of where not- he, he kind of got his start. So uh Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm I'm just a little worried, but I it's because I love the character. I think he loves it just as much as me. So this is the third time as the charm, okay? Maybe, maybe the third time is a charm, right? We're gonna get the, get it right the third time. Yeah, X Men ninety seven. What I will say from what I've seen of the images that were posted online, I I guess they're trying to make it look not, like the ninety seven series. They're gonna probably use the same music, and it's taking place they, right after. They the, may you they may use the same music, but there's no way that those photos I saw online. Are the same and I know they're not the same animation style. No, no, they're it not. looks like Flash. <laughs> so oh. I don't know. And the Marvel so, Zombies and uh, Peter Parker oh sophomore year on stuff. Yes, freshman, yeah, so, freshman yeah, year. So, so yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, freshman. Yeah, well, apparently we're getting both freshman and sophomore year or something. Really. Norman, Osborne's I don't know. A black guy. Yeah. Oh boy, really? Yeah. I I didn't know. I did not know that. Oh yeah. I, I'm I'm learning things as we go here inside mm-hmm. Studio 2000. That won't folks. ruffle any feathers. We'll we'll see what happens there. <laughs> <sighs> I, I can I can see the pitchforks coming from a mile away. When are we supposed to get into the Spider Verse? Isn't that next year or is that this year? Next year. You're talking about the animated? Yeah, next yeah, yeah. Next year. Next year. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, I didn't yeah, talk okay. about it because they're probably still working. Yeah, pro- um, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know X Men ninety seven. Here's here's my biggest problem. Just initially, just with the over, some of the voice actors have passed away. Oh yeah, right. Like, look, I, I get it. They want it to be as as faithful as it can be, but I mean, there is no like Norm Spencer. There's nobody else that can put so many J's and so many E's and so many A's and so many N's on a girl named Jean because <laughs> the, the, the man was a, I'm just going to say it, he's a Marvel. Uh, you know, he, <sighs> and then, like I said, some of the photos that I saw from on various, because some of this news, how I found out about some, especially the DC crap, mm-hmm. Like I like I didn't even know like if it wasn't for the fact that Epic Voice guy uh, John Bailey was at SDCC and he put on his stories that Shazam Two was going to be a thing or that they were announcing it, I wouldn't have even known. Oh yeah, I knew about that. Uh, I, I I saw their first trailer and I was just like, oh, okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm so far. Uh, yeah. That's the that's the interesting thing, and that's kind of where I guess we'll we'll go ahead and end this one because, like I said, folks long <laughs> process to get to where the where we are now i am so far out of dc films i'm so like even dc tv like i need to catch up on so much stuff i need to rewatch so much stuff i just for the first time well this is more like i'm more into the marvel shows and things but i'm not even really into the marvel like that's the funny thing I was into the DC animation, but not necessarily the live action stuff. And I was into outside of what if I was into the Marvel live action stuff, not necessarily the animated stuff. And 
like for me now with streaming and whatever and having everything at the you know the the point of a mouse i hate watching cartoons on television and when i say i hate watching cartoons on television i mean in 2009 or 10 or whatever the hell spec spidey originally aired cartoon network can suck my web shooter because I hated how I could never catch it. Well, now that it's on Netflix, I've seen all 26 episodes. <laughs> Piss me off and... because uh, DC won me back. And they, won't, <laughs> they won't, they, 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 just, they, they, they keep dropping the ball. I don't understand. Su- the Suicide Squad, the Peacemaker, to the Batman, that's three good ones in a row. And you're just not you're, you're underwhelming me. I don't really care about Black Adam. I, I, I go, go good for the Rock. Yeah. It's not like I'm down on those movies. It's just like okay, yeah, great. Knock my socks off, guys. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> Try and knock my yeah. socks off. You're on. A, you were on a roll. You won me back. You know how hard it was to win me back, and you got the you got Matt Reeves, and you made me maybe the best Batman movie of all time. And you made me like. Peacemaker, one of the most fringiest DC characters of all time. You made me love the Suicide Squad after making the worst Suicide Squad rendition maybe ever. And then you come at the Comic Con, you just you just <laughs> like a big fat. <laughs> it's like, what are you do? Come, guys? Come on, man. Come on. Greenlight the Batman too. Just just do that. It's it takes nothing. A tweet to do anything. Anything. Yes, anything. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for us, I think. Where can the people find your stuff, sir? At trying to be DJV is me on Twitter. Uh, Harry Potter fans, come at me, bro. I, I, <laughs> trust me, I fought this battle many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> I got Harry Potter fans in the family. I fought this battle all day. I'll fight all day. Uh, and Simplistic uh, Reviews, you can search uh, simp- uh, Simplistic.Reviews is the website and search Simplistic Reviews on YouTube, Stitcher, TuneIn, you know, all that good stuff. We're there. Very cool, very cool. They'll be there in September, October, November, December, January. And August. August. August kind of went missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't know we what don't know what's happening. That's, 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 a, that's, that's a blind spot. <laughs> we don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Thank you for joining us here inside Studio 2009. If you'd like to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show, there are several ways to do so. Visit the website where you can listen to and comment on all of our posts. Send us email to feedback at geekcastradio.com uh, all the podcatching things all the any, any podcasting things you use folks I'm sure Studio 2009 is on them our Twitters are at Geekcast Radio at It's Studio 2009 I am at TFG and Mike you can also search out Geekcast Radio Network and Studio 2009 Podcast on Facebook uh, funny thing is since you are here and I was going to bring this up to you off here but we don't have to but since no one's going to actually see this sadly because we need to fix our con- our comment system so somebody uh, I'm going to say what he typed in his name to be 70s Richard I don't know if you know 70s Richard okay. he commented on the direction of MCU Thor oh, God, please come at me what what <laughs> What do you no, want? This, no, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Mm. Son of a bitch! I have been waiting to use the theme music from the Long Good Friday for a decade, <laughs> and here you just toss it in his background music. <laughs> Damn you all! To hell. <laughs> okay, that's a connoisseur. Okay, the Long Good Friday, folks. Oh, this is a, this is a, a great film. Great film. Great film. That's all I'll say. Bob Hoskins. Speaking of Mario Brothers. <laughs> 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 oh my god, you tied it back into Mario Bros. Holy crap, I haven't heard Ross, that in over three Ross, hours. Ross, Ross movie, uh, Long Good Friday. Great yeah. film, great film. Oh my god, that's... Great that's song, hilarious. that's why I use it, because it's one of my favorite. I, I said, if I ever get another show, I'm using the Long Good Friday music. So, I beat you, <laughs> 70s Richard, I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh my, song my song. god. <laughs> oh my god. Next time around, I believe Steve Megatron and I are going to do some sort of something with some sort of twin suns and sand, I think. I don't know, but I think that's what we're... That's that's me slowly defragging my hard drive because you're Mm -hmm. talking about some... (laughs) 
It is, yes. Whoa. Hence why I only mentioned the twin suns <laughs> and the sand. Oh, it gets like, everywhere. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not in your hard drive, so it's okay. <laughs> For now, I am TFG and Mike with DJ Valentine. You'll hear us back in the studio soon. Soon.